Okay, so welcome to this YouTube channel, which will be about art. And uh, it will uh, contain videos of me discussing different paintings and perhaps other artworks like uh, uh, sculptures and stuff like that. And here we have a painting by Paul Jacques Amé Baudry. If I can't pronounce stuff in French or English or any other language, uh, you can help me by writing a comment in the comment section. Uh, but if you're a hater, just go home, okay? This is a uh, Oil on Canvas by Paul Jacques Amé Baudry, painted in 1860. Now, what is uh, depicted here? We have Charlotte Corday. She was actually executed in 1793. Uh, she was guillotined to death for this murder of Jean-Paul Marat, who's in the bathtub there with a knife in his chest. Thrust that knife into this man's chest and you will be executed in 1793. That is what she should have known. This guy who she killed was actually a politician and a journalist and he was a very... he, he was a radical. He was a radical. And uh, she didn't like uh, this radical course of the revolution. So and she was a uh, Girondine, okay, so she she was against this radicalism and she thought that her uh, the Girondines were persecuted and purged because of these uh, radicals uh, you know, because of their influence, so that's why she killed him she sympathized with these Girondines. Uh, perhaps you, you wouldn't call her a Girondine. I don't really know French history that well. But she stabbed him to death in this bathtub and uh, she was later nicknamed the Angel of Assassination. And is she an angel? Well, I don't know. Uh, she seems to be a very beautiful woman, uh, of course but also a very dangerous woman. Watch out for those. And what about the artist? Well, he was born in 1828, and he has also painted this, The Pearl and the Wave. La Perle, La Perle et la Vache. A very beautiful painting, and it should not be confused with La Vache, 1896. William William Adolf Bouguereau. Very beautiful painting. If you look at her face, you can see how extremely detailed it is. And look at the waves. Seriously, look at the waves out there. Look at the textures. Look at this painting is fantastic. It's a and it's a you know fantastic uh, artist who was very underrated for some time, but he has got some post-mortem recognition. I don't know if you're familiar with Art Renewal Center or what it's called. It's like a website which has a lot of high-quality paintings, actually. Uh, I think uh, if you pay if you pay the money, you get access to more paintings and stuff, but they have some stuff for free as well. Uh, what can I say more about this guy? Well, he... He was... I don't think I have to say much more. He was very underrated, but a very skilled professional. And this is a self-portrait of him from 1879. Badass. Ah, oh, the kiss, il bacio, 
artista italiano. Can you guess who it is? Francesco Ayes, 1859. Half French guy, actually, who was born into a family which was not very rich. It was not a rich family for him being a, such a cultivated uh, artist. He was born in 1791 and he lived a long life, biting the dust at an age of 91 in 1882. Look at this painting. Do you see some shadow there in the lower left? To the lower left there. I think I see a shadow and it's not their shadow for sure. We have that to the right and that would be completely unnatural. We see a shadow. Uh, this kiss seems to be forbidden, but they love each other. He loves her and we can see that she loves him. We can see that in her, the way she holds her arm. In some way it's so obvious. They are obviously in love with each other. And this uh, Francesco Ayes, the Italiano artist, uh, he lived a long life as I said and he well, what did he do with it? Well, we can see that he did this, for example, you know, destruction of Jerusalem. Actually, it's called the destruction of Temple of Jerusalem, but it's more badass to say the destruction of Jerusalem. 1867. Crusaders near Jerusalem, date unknown. <laughs> he was very much into this uh, Jerusalem, this Jerus Jerusalem stuff, and he had perhaps some religious stuff as well, and that is something I have thought about. Religion in art. Uh, in my home country there are many atheist extremists now i don't care if you are a christian or a muslim or an atheist or a buddhist or whatever uh, but when you say that a painting is beautiful and you get the counter argument ah oh, but it's it's a religious depiction like it's it's the virgin mary holding a little Jesus Christ uh, and we we are atheists so we we don't like that painting <sighs> well if you're gonna be a real intellectual you have to know about history and you have to know about religion and a painting is beautiful I mean, there were many Christian artists who painted so fantastic and awesome paintings of, you know, Greek, with Greek mythological depictions. Uh, and, I mean, <laughs> your religion doesn't have a shit to do with it, actually. It doesn't mean shit. You have to appreciate art which depicts different things. Otherwise, you're so extremely narrow-minded and you can't think like that. You have to appreciate all kinds of stuff, you know. Uh, so, you know, it's just uh, so many people who uh, try to do... They try to make a political point out of... Uh, what kind of art other people enjoy and that is something we have to uh, stand up against and uh, you know some people go as far as I mean they, they will they will accuse you of being weird and they will try to humiliate you because you, you don't buy into their mainstream culture like 
some guy watching only Quentin Tarantino movies and think that you're weird because you like Ingmar Bergman or uh, Akira Kurosawa or Andrei Tarkovsky or something like that. They say that you are weird and they try to humiliate you because you have a brain. I mean, that is... We have to stand up against that kind of behavior and we should not be ashamed. We should be proud. That is what we should be. We should be proud. And it doesn't have anything to do... You can, you can be working class or you can be a capitalist. It doesn't matter. Everybody... All social classes, all religions, all races, it doesn't matter. We can be intellectuals and appreciate great art from different cultures. I just wanted to say that. And don't get humiliated by unintellectual people who are trying to make a point. Let's move on. Let's move on. The execution of Lady Jane Grey. This my friends, is perfection. 1833, oil on ca canvas, Paul de la Roche. Look at this dramatic composition. She is blindfolded. She had been sentenced to death for high treason. Lady Jane Grey was the English monarch for a few days. I think it was like nine days, but there was some kind of power struggle which she lost and she was convicted of high treason and she was executed at the age of 16 or 17. So let's look at the painting. This man helps her finding the block on which she will get her head chopped off. Uh, that's kind of terrible actually. And if you look at the women to the left, you see the grief and despair. And perhaps that catches your attention. But if you look at the guy to the right, the executioner, what is his facial expression? He is not very happy either. He's actually... He, he doesn't want to do this. We can see this in his face. He, he feels very... He's all, he's, he, he, probably, he probably has the same feelings as those women to the left. But he's a man and he should not show it. It's, there's so much drama in this beautiful painting. And there is one thing I want you to... Uh, realize here. If you look at the colors, what do we see? We see it's very dark in the room. This executioner guy, he has dark clothes, and the other man, he also has dark clothes. Those women to the left, dark clothes. Everything is dark, except for what? Yes, you're right. Lady Jane Grey Beautiful as she is, she's the light in this painting. She's the light. And she represents the invaluability of life, you could say. Look how carefully this man is helping her. It's such a beautiful painting. It's perfection. It's pure. It represents the beauty of life. The invaluability of life. This is one of the greatest paintings in history, I think. And uh, yes, okay, so I hope you like this video. If so, please like it. Thank you so much for listening. See you guys.